What's up guys, Salty Mike here coming at you with another week in review. And I wanna start this video out with uh, thanking you guys. Uh, we hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I mentioned this at the end of our podcast, Answer the Call this week, but uh, I, I wanted to mention at the beginning of, the, of this video, cause this, this kind of video series is what seems to be giving a lot of traction to the channel. It's something new, it's something different that we haven't done before. So I just wanna say thank you and I, and I do really, really appreciate it. So now getting right back to the video, we start out with the patch notes every week, and this week we had three patches to look over. Uh, two PTU patches, so starting out with 3.6.1F, there's really nothing to discuss here. I'll leave it on screen for a little bit. Um, sometimes you just get small patches that are likely just crash fixes and things like that. So now moving on to 3.6.1G, they mention fixing the issue with our ship components not spawning. But... As we'll discuss a little bit later, this really isn't fixed. And I really wanted to mention this patch note because there's a hero in the comment section. So the top comment was this dude that basically posted what probably should be in the known issue section with every single issue council report related to it. So you can go there, reproduce them, contribute to them. It was awesome. Dude, you're doing God's work. Like, keep it up. That That's amazing. And then moving on to the 3.6.1 live patch. Yes, it went live. Uh, it basically was an amalgamation of all the PTU patches that we discussed. And the main thing that I want to talk about here is the fact that they mention at the top that there is a wipe during this patch. <sighs> Given the fact that the ship components, there's still an issue with people's accounts with that. I'm not sure if the patch that has the 890 jump and ship rentals will cause a wipe as well. I hope it does not but uh, we'll see. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that 3.6.1 is a patch where we can just make some progress towards some ships that we don't own. But given that that issue is still there, I really don't know if that's going to be the case. So if you're looking for the patch to get into to start making progress in Star Citizen, I'm not 100% sure if this one is it. And then moving on to the monthly report, we had both the Squadron 42 and Persistent Universe monthly reports this week, and I am going to start out with the Persistent Universe one. Now, for these, they're really long. You should read them yourselves, or you can watch Board Gamers videos. I'll, I'll link to those videos in the description. But Board kind of goes through everything. I'm just going to go through a few things that I find really important, like we tend to do on this show each week. So... Starting out with art and specifically weapons art, the really big thing that they mentioned here, and I don't think I see it listed on the roadmap anywhere for 3.7, is that there was work done on the kind of other attachments not related to scopes, like not related to what we have in 3.6, so likely the underbarrel and on barrel attachments. And this was also mentioned in the tech animation section of the monthly report as well. And then moving on to design, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff here was filled with 3.6 stuff that we're already aware of. But at the end, you'll see that they mentioned that they did the initial balance of ship rentals. And this is really important because you really want to work towards ships in the game to purchase. So ship rentals really have to be balanced very well against those ship purchase prices. So you are working towards buying instead of just constantly renting. And then there was also a discussion, uh, specifically a discussion, not actually any major work going into uh, how harvestable entities will be sold after you've already kind of grabbed them and, and, and brought them back with you to a location or whatever. Then under gameplay features, work was ongoing for the new character customizer, and this should be a massive change here, as well as polish to those ship rental kiosks, where we'll be obviously renting ships from. So we now have cargo kiosks, mining kiosks, ship purchasing kiosks, uh, the where where you spawn your ship from kiosks. There's there's a lot of them. So I wonder when these are going to kind of all be um, implemented together. And it's probably going to work somewhere in line with the, the building blocks impl implementation that we've discussed a few weeks ago. And that's kind of it for the Persistent Universe roadmap. And now we're moving on to the Squadron 42 roadmap. And similar to... The Persistent Universe one will grab a couple of key things to pick out here, but we're going to link to the description of the actual notes or the, the monthly report so you guys can check it out yourselves. So starting out with character art, uh, they had great results with the hair pipeline. And why this kind of matters for us is that like T-34 
Tisha Pacheco and a lot of the other NPCs in the game, they just don't look great right now. And a big reason for that is their hair doesn't look very great. So uh, the fact that they got good in-engine results should mean that maybe we'll see some implementation of new hair in the near future in the Persistent Universe. And then engineering uh, work went into physical inventories. Uh, specifically, they discussed attachments to your armor or your suits, and then as well as a container or containers to stow resources and other smaller items. Likely resources means those harvestable entities that we'll be discussing a little bit later in the video. And same thing in this section, I will always discuss anytime they have mentioned of server-side OCS, and they do it here. So basically, um, we'll be constantly saying, look, they're still working on it until it's implemented or until it's on the roadmap somewhere where we, where we can track it. So work's still going on. Hopefully, uh, it's still working at a good pace, and we'll see it soon in the game. And then moving on to the graphic section, this is something that I'm not uh, very... I don't really understand it completely, so I discussed it with a friend of mine, Hurricane, uh, and he kind of gave me an understanding of it a little bit where basically CIG is working on a low level API to likely take advantage of as many cores as they possibly can on our CPU. So the big thing here and the big takeaway from this is that it should help with Vulkan implementation, but also we really don't know what our machines can do in Star Citizen yet, specifically because Server-side OCS isn't implemented, so the server is a bottleneck for us. And the fact that we don't have this API uh, is sort of a bottleneck for us as well. I may sound really stupid there. I may not know what I'm talking about. Again, this is just kind of me listening to someone else and regurgitating it to you. So let me know in the comments below if you have anything more to add there. And that'll do it for the Squadron 42 monthly report. And moving on to the roadmap updates. I may be leaving these out of these videos for the near future. It just doesn't seem like a lot of work is going on with them. I don't really know what's going on. Maybe there's a disconnect between what's going on at the office versus what they're kind of sharing on the roadmap, or it's a really good representation of how much work is going into Squadron 42 versus how much work is going into the PU. But uh, I, I there really isn't much to discuss here, just more kind of minor progress is going on and not much progress going on in 3.6.1x or whatever we're going to call the patch where we get uh, specifically the 890 jump and ship rentals and whatever additional bug fixes need to come in. So moving on to video content, we did have a Star Citizen Live this week with our good friend Jay Lee starting it out with some character concept art. And I'm just going to play almost the entire clip here for you so you guys can kind of see what work has been going on for that. The character concept team finished an exciting batch of, oh yeah, belly roll, belly roll, drum roll, vendors and shopkeepers for Star Citizen. If you've noticed very recently, and actually for the past couple years, our shop vendors and also our shopkeepers, they're wearing generic clothing, just t-shirt and pants. And we thought to bring some more life into the universe. And so we have our bartenders. So it's not just the tux anymore. I've, I've actually gotten some requests from some people who want a bar, a specific bartender outfit. So we took that into consideration, make it more how do you say, not just a suit and tie, but a little bit more flair to it. And also for the servers, we put the aprons on there as well. We also did some restaurant stuff, so chefs and waiters and hostesses. That was actually a big challenge because we were thinking of how can we make chefs look sci-fi when the current day chefs look very, they're very simple. And so we had to go through a lot of design passes and we thought this looked really cool where it maintains the look of a chef, but still looks sci-fi and cool. Let's talk about the talk of the town, which is bounty hunters. People are asking, like, where are the bounty hunters? And so you get to kind of get a sneak peek of what the bounty hunters look like. The hardest part for the bounty hunters was so that we don't get into shipjacker territory, which is actually kid bashy stuff. And so how can we make it customized but not Mad Maxi? Uh, and so this is kind of what we came up with. So we also worked on uh, some cold weather clothing for Microtech, which is actually, I think, our first batch of clothing from Code Blue Apparel. And they are going to be not your just jacket and pants, but thick clothing. So you can actually, when you're trudging through the snow, you'll be protected. And also, you look pretty, pretty cool. 
The biggest thing for, for the concept team really was, you know, we're 900 years in the future where there's different cultures that are mixed in together. So we thought to actually incorporate more different cultures from different races and different possibly religions and stuff like that, put it all into like a melting pot. And uh, Chris was actually really excited to see those. It's going to be really cool to see the NPCs kind of come to life and, and kind of have more a, of a descriptor of who they are and what they do based on what they're wearing. Uh, but more importantly, with 3.7, we should be seeing PvP bounties coming in. So having the bounty hunter armor being concepted and hopefully coming into game in 3.7 should be really, really exciting. I am so looking forward to that. So that, that looked pretty cool. Let me know what you guys thought about the, in the comments below about that bounty hunter armor in particular. Is that something you're going to wear? Is that something you're going to want to use? Um, it, it looks really, really cool. On top of that, the first concepts of the Microtech clothing is awesome. These huge, big jackets and big, kind of warm-looking clothing for these cold environments that we have should be a lot of fun to wear, uh, kind of on some of these moons that, that we're working out with. And, and it was really nice the, to see them uh, incorporate different cultures and, and maybe even kind of like religions into the game as well. Uh, the, the current religions that we have in the world today have lasted much longer than a thousand years, some of them. So to imagine that they might be there a thousand years in the future as well uh, kind of makes sense to me. And moving on, we have the next section of Star Citizen Live, which is the Sprint Report, where they kind of go over what they're really pushing for right now in the studios. And the first thing they're talking about is harvestable entities. And we discussed this a little bit earlier, but this is where we really get a good look at what they are. The Persistent Universe gameplay team in Europe is continuing their work on Harvestables, which is a fancy name for, hey, I want to pick that thing up and put it in my back. What you're seeing here are work in progress assets for a small collection of harvestable plants that may one day populate the surface of a planet like Hurston. While these plants and the harvestable system are still very much work in progress, when combined with the upcoming personal inventory system, they'll set the table allowing for future additions to the actor status system, incorporating things like hunger, thirst, etc. It's another example of how smaller systems can build to a larger interconnected feature down the line. Now it's really cool to see something that we can grab and put in our inventories and take and sell or use, but most importantly, I have to bring up the fact that they mentioned the actor status system. So this might play into some sort of hunger and thirst and uh, buffs and debuffs kind of thing. So really pay attention to that over the next, I guess, year or so and see, let's see kind of how that grows into something that makes our gameplay experience either more fun or different or whatever. And then finally, we had the 890 jump lower deck that was shown. I'm not really going to share the clip with you like I do the other ones. I'm just going to kind of have it on while I talk about it because I don't know how many 890 jump owners out there would need a video like this to, to figure out what's going on with Star Citizen each week. Uh, but more, important, more importantly, I want to discuss something about that lower deck thing. And I'm going to share this clip with you where... It's something that can be implemented on every planet, I hope. It's a big ship with a big hangar, and it's designed in such a way that the whole floor will rise up on these pillars that you see here, and they'll take you up flush with the exterior, which, if you know the shape, it's a big flat wedge, and you'll be flush up there, and it'll make landing and taking off a, a lot easier. The way we land on planets and moons right now, where we're dropping into a hangar instead of landing on a platform that pulls us down into a hangar uh, is something that I hope to see change. And, and the fact that they can do this on a ship, I really hope they can start doing these on planets. And it might make our takeoff and landing experiences much, much better in, in the near future. That would be an awesome quality of life change for Star Citizen in particular. And then finally, we had a discussion about community booths. So if you didn't get a ticket for Citizen Con, you may be able to get one here. And I'll just kind of play the clip and then we'll move on to Star Citizen Live. And to those attending or interested in attending CitizenCon this year, we have a short video about this year's community booths to share with you. Now, they're not just for orgs anymore, and they'll get you a free admission to CitizenCon if you missed out on one of the tickets. So check this out. It's for you, you're Ultima, right? I'm Ultima. All right, energy and elements. 
This is great. great. I love this. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to watch the prices. Yeah. You guys gonna get dressed up or you? I've got my outfit. Yeah. What do you think? I like it. So look, this is awesome. Pretty cool. So if there's any vendors out there that want to go to CitizenCon or any orgs that want to share their their play gameplay experiences or whatever they're going to do in the verse with people at CitizenCon, they may be able to get a ticket out there. Um, but again, moving into Star Citizen Live, this is not something that we'll discuss too much on the show because it doesn't really have any major in-game imp implementations that I think are worth sharing this week. But Jay Lee and Jared had a really nice show. It was very fun to watch. I watched it while I was at work on break. And uh, I enjoyed it. So we'll we'll leave the link in the description below if you want to check it out yourselves. But basically, they made a jacket in the verse, and it was it was pretty cool. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. And then finally, we come to the miscellaneous section of the stream, where uh, the most important thing probably is what next week's Star Citizen Live will be. And we're gonna have uh, Pedro Camacho on. So he's the composer for Star Citizen's music. So they maybe they'll share some music or uh discuss kind of his workflow or something uh, i'm pretty sure we won't be discussing this too much on our uh star citizen weekly review but but it might be pretty neat for you guys to check out if you're into that kind of thing so i'll leave a link in the description of the question and answer thread for pedro and then lastly uh your digital goodies from the 2018 citizen con are finally in the game but they are not quite implemented maybe the way that you expect them so i'll just Put some B-roll up of Xylo's post there about them. And yeah, that's that's going to leave us with this video for this week. I really, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thank you so much for all the the love and hitting 5,000 subscribers feels really, really good to me. Uh, I feel like I'm, I, I'm doing something good here and I'm building something on this channel that I'm really proud of. So thank you for, for making it something worth being proud of. So I appreciate it, guys. And yeah, leave a like, uh, comment below on anything we discussed today, if you liked it, if you didn't. And uh, yeah, subscribe for more weeks in review, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, everybody.